Since 1980, the cost of consumer goods has risen an average of 120%, but college tuition has risen by a whopping 260%. With budget cuts, teacher firings, and a large budget deficit at UMass Boston, many students and professors don't believe the university should be paying for athletics. This is often because some people do not understand the difficulty of the student-athlete lifestyle, or may not be aware of what athletics gives back to the local and academic community. For us, I mean, the hope is we are instilling um, an accountability in our student athletes that they might not otherwise have as um, you know a student at the school that is not involved in intercollegiate athletics. So for us as a program, you know we're big believers that you know the same people who are exhibiting character traits that are going to make them successful off the field are really the same character traits that we look for when we're recruiting student athletes um, in the hopes that they'll be successful on the field as well. Um, I think right off the bat the obvious one is time management. Um, we expect a lot more of student athletes' time than perhaps another student might. Um, be experiencing and so for that guys time management is, is something that's incredibly important and also I think an even broader piece of that is the sacrifices we ask student athletes to make in particular you know the types of the decisions they're making off the field so you know accountability and rules and things that you know non-student athletes might not have on a day-to-day -day basis you know if, if one of our student athletes is, is at a party you know there's decisions that he has to make that maybe another another student at a university um, or one of his peers isn't necessarily held to the same standards by a team and by a coach and by a program. And so for us, I think the challenge of making those decisions, you know, all year long, I think is something that that is difficult for um, difficult for student athletes. Sure. Um, so I think for us, the Division Three level, obviously not having athletic scholarships, and beyond that, you know, not really having an opportunity, especially in our sport, for guys to pursue a professional career beyond UMass Boston in lacrosse. Um, I think the obvious one right off the bat is the recruitment and retention of, of students. Um, you know, we as coaches are really out there on the front lines of recruiting um, people to UMass Boston, telling people the UMass Boston story. We probably talk to 1,500 or 2,000 people in every class um, that we are telling people what UMass Boston is all about and ultimately recruiting you know, 12 to 15 people a year in our sport that are coming to UMass Boston that might not otherwise know about UMass Boston um, and might not otherwise have the opportunity to come here. So I think the recruiting and kind of the revenue that that can bring is obviously something that's critically important. Obviously, for us, revenue goes beyond things like ticket sales, goes beyond concessions, goes beyond, you know, jersey sales, the things you hear about at, at big time Division One programs. You know, it, it, it's things like the tuition dollars that might not otherwise come into play um, if a university doesn't have athletics. I think in addition to that, I think it really affords an opportunity for a university to have a broader footprint. Um, you know, people who are involved in athletics, even if they aren't necessarily planning to compete at the college level, I think being a part of an athletic department um, really adds to, you know, campus culture, campus activity, and kind of pride in that, in that school. That's a good question. I think different institutions will fund them at different levels. I've, I've been at a couple different different division threes with vastly different um, budgets and I think um, a lot of it depends on the importance that it is to that institution even in my you know 14 years here at UMass Boston our budgets have really changed uh, quite a bit from when I started when I started all the coaches were part-time with the exception of a few um, now all the coaches are pretty much full-time um, you know the budgets were very very small for recruiting and equipment and all those kinds of things and now um, those have really increased uh, and also our assistant coaching budgets have gone way up from where they used to be um, so I think that's it's an institutional choice to kind of how much they want to invest in that um, but I think if you're getting a lot of real positive press I mean athletics is the front door to the institution you know we have our own website there's a lot of things that people can talk about at meetings across campus hey did you see the lacrosse team at the championship game did you see baseball won this did you see the hockey team at frozen Fenway um, those are things that I think bring a lot of um, cross-campus pride um, and, and are good talking points on top of the, the academic accomplishments that the, the universities kind of typically speak about. And they're willing to also invest because I think the numbers show that student athletes do better than your typical student academically. Uh, the numbers support that, especially at the Division three level. Um, so I think when you can show people that like, hey, we're not here on full athletic scholarships, uh, <laughs> but uh, they're doing better than your average student, I think it's impressive because of all those kind of traits we talked about. In sure, so those same skills that make you a successful student athlete, um, things like accountability, things like having a, a high character, work ethic, those types of things, that makes you successful as a student athlete um, certainly translate into the working world. I believe that we are instilling leadership skills 
into our student athletes that they might not otherwise have the opportunity to have. Um, you know, especially in a team sport like lacrosse, there's dynamics of working with others that you might not always experience, um, you know, in the classroom. And I think that sets people up for success really beyond here. You know, as, as a Division three program, my goal first and foremost is putting our athletes in a position to be successful beyond college um, and giving them the tools they need to do that. And so, you know, I think, you know, the, the characteristics that make a guy, again, a successful lacrosse player are the same characteristics that'll make them you know, successful, whatever it is their profession, you know, they choose. When schools fund athletics, they provide many young adults with opportunities they may not otherwise have, and an environment for them that will elevate themselves academically and allow them to be outstanding ambassadors for their school.